Good morning, folks. No time to waste. The Earth is having a seizure. We began moments after yesterday's news with a strong quake on the Pacific Ridge. Those who've been here a while know that means to watch the subduction zone. Next in the red, a 6.6 .6 hit Indonesia. Gotta wonder if six-pointers even phase these people anymore. After that, the story was California and the Virgin Islands taking turns quaking. A bunch of four-pointers rocked the Caribbean, and for those who don't know why we care, it's because the topography suggests the potential for a catastrophic landslide on the north side of one of these islands, producing a tsunami that would hit... Well, you see. The day finished out with at least two five-pointers in Southern California and a number of quakes in Baja and around the region. But then that subduction zone did hit, a 7.3 rattled El Salvador. To answer your question, Mark, that Neptune opposition was at least two and a half days before this quake, so close call. Still lots to learn about that aspect. Back to El Salvador, there is no damage reported and all tsunami watches were only centimeters at their peak. There have been several aftershocks, including a 5.1 nearby in Nicaragua. As if this area didn't have enough to worry about, you see we still expect a Category 3 hurricane. But you might notice it's set to go a bit west of where we had it yesterday. It's because most forecast models now take Isaac directly over New Orleans at the peak of the storm's power. Isaac has already drenched Florida, but when we take a look at the rainfall record set yesterday, you can see the most interesting location was Maryland. Extreme flooding in Talbot County, where 5 inches of rain fell in just 90 minutes, nearly an inch in 10 minutes in Carroll County. There are others here as well. This link is below. It's easy to use. So what caused this midday geomagnetic disturbance yesterday? 1200 UTC is on the left here as we look at the solar wind telemetry. The yellow is the speed, and yes, we've been in a coronal hole stream for two days, but it ramped up yesterday. We had readings over 700 kilometers per second. You can see right around 1200, our shields took some pushback. There was intermittent solar plasma penetration at the red spikes over the following 12 hours, and that high speed stream induced multiple frequencies over time, strongest at 1.7 hertz. Having a quick look at the active regions on the sun and their magnetics, my eyes are firmly set on this region just facing us now. Big umbra, clearly defined by polar areas. She actually kicked out a filament yesterday. Earth's magnetic connection to the sun is on the northwest quadrant of the Earth-facing side. We do only have one active region up there, bipolar, relatively stable. As usual, here's a look at your star. Those thin dark plasma filaments are still a primary eruption watch. Let's hope for no more big quakes as well. Eyes open. That's the news, folks. Be safe.